What's up everyone and welcome to my guide to solo going to masters. Timestamps are listed in the description below if you'd like to go to a specific time or skip to a certain part of the video. I've recently solo queued to masters with crypto as I'm a crypto main and with the knowledge I've gained I feel like I'll be able to help and somewhat improve the ranked experience. This guide is mainly aimed at crypto players in ranked but the general tips and advice in parts of the video apply to the player rather than the legend itself and can be applied to any rank stage. For those who are looking to main or play crypto then I've already made an in-depth crypto guide that you can check out in the description below. If you'd like to see my journey from diamond to masters then I've uploaded my ranked games on the YouTube channel. Each video is split into two games and are slightly longer so you can see my decision making and see how I win majority of the games. I also stream nearly every day on Twitch playing as crypto and the link is also in the description so I hope to see you guys there. Without further ado, let's get into it. I feel like it's much easier to climb from Diamond to Masters. If you are unaware, with the introduction of Season 8, Apex has improved their matchmaking by aiming to match players in the same rank tier as you are and you are more likely to be matched with other diamonds. Whereas in the previous rank system, if you're diamond and reach diamond 3 or up, you'll be matched with masters and preds. So if you're previously hard stuck diamond 3 or 4, now is your best chance of hitting masters and even pred. First you should evaluate your playstyle. Do you tend to loot most of the game and fight no one till the end? W key every team or are you selective with your fights? I myself tend to be aggressive in pubs, but in ranked I'm more reserved and know when to take fights or not. You also need to strike a balance of gun skill and game sense. I feel like game sense has helped me massively to get to masters and simple things such as map zone knowledge, executing and disengaging fights, avoiding certain areas, how many legends do you see and which legends there are, how to approach multiple teams and late game executions. Most guides out there advise you to be passive aggressive which is true but also you need to think and play smart. Examples will be knowing where to land and loot and knowing when to pick your fights and resetting from fights. It's also important to mentally note down certain situations and understand how you can approach them better or quickly adapt to other factors such as legend abilities, third parties or zone so that when you do face a similar scenario you can react quicker to it. Next up is why using crypto is a good idea in ranked. Crypto has really good abilities for an environment which is fast paced and very competitive. Information is key so it's always necessary to use your drone to scan for beacons so you can position your team better in the next zone, check for enemies in choke points, buildings or open areas, finding a route to safely guide the team for early or late rotations. It's also important to use the drone to identify and check which team is at. Crypto is unknown for being in the drone for too long but if you have a reason to then there is no issue. Be sure to let your teammates know what your plan is and make sure to stick with the team. His drone can show how many squads there are within 200 meters from Crypto. This is perfect as you can determine if you would like to fight one squad in the area or be more reserved if there are multiple squads. If there are two you can scout the area and see if they're going to come across each other which can lead to an easy third party. If there are multiple squads in the area this is where you use your decision making. You either avoid teams and go for placement or try to take a quick fight and hopefully you don't get third party. There will always be other factors that determine if the fight will be quick or take longer than usual which more often leads to teams coming to the area. I've seen a lot of fights where it's a 3v2 or 3v1 and the last teammate feels like it's necessary just to die because they cannot do nothing. You are a crypto, the drone expert. If you time it right and manage to run away you are able to recover banners and res instantly. You don't have to go down with them. Having a drone range of 200 meters allows you to go so far and be able to pick up banners. Of course if the enemy team is using Bloodhound ult, Pathfinder grapple or ult or Octane's jump pad then you may not be able to survive. It's also up to your judgment whether to res nearby that enemy team or res somewhere else so it's important to check banners. Another tip is that when you finish the fight make sure that your health and shields are recharged and immediately check banners. There could be teams coming to third so warning your team could help them loot faster or take whatever is necessary and move away from the battlefield. EMPing is a perfect way to start fights or disengage from them. It removes 50 shield which equals to 2 bars and it causes the enemy team to make a few decisions either to shield up which allows your team to push up, fight without 2 extra bars of shield or attempt to shoot down the drone mid or after EMP which also allows your team to push up and potentially down one first. Sometimes the enemy teams run away with or away from each other making it easier to focus on certain legends. If you're up against a well coordinated team then one may focus on the drone and the other two may focus on the push so you need to be careful with that. 
As you EMP, face your drone downwards to give your team permanent hacks so that you're able to anticipate the danger unless the enemy team moves out of the range or destroys your drone. When EMPing, check what Evo shields they have and listen to the Evo shield crack and relay the information to your team. You can also look at the general area of each enemy, so say that if there is a legend on top of the hill or building, always let your teammate know where they are so that they are aware. You need to remember that EMP removes inactive caustic traps, Watson fences and ult, horizon ult, ramparts amp cover and disable Sheila for around 15 seconds. It also removes Gibraltar bubble which is so important as he is a popular legend in ranked and teams tend to huddle into the bubble to heal or if Gibraltar is resing their teammate so by removing it with EMP you have the potential to down one during their resing or healing animation. With the current meta of Revenant and Octane push when you EMP legends that are in death protection form it takes away 50 HP making it easier to send them back. So if you are being pushed self EMPing might be the necessary option. Scanning enemies and EMPing is an easy way to get assists as long as your team downs them first. Respawn has increased the threshold to get an assist from 7.5 seconds to 10 seconds so you have more time to secure the assist. With the mid season 8 patch we all have a survival slot which can store items like heat shields and mobile respawn beacons which can be carried without taking an extra slot in the backpack. This is useful as using a standard beacon can be risky or out of zone so having one can save your teammates or yourself. Even though Crypto has amazing pros, there are some cons. In order to use the drone, Crypto has to pilot the drone, meaning that you are exposed. And if a fight is about to start, it would be an uneven matchup since it will be a 3v2. Therefore, it's crucial to practice how close to be before bringing out the drone, and be aware of your surroundings when in drone view, as you do not want to be in your drone for a long period of time. An example when to use your drone for a longer period than normal would be when you are bunkering down in a building and informing your teammates to cover while you scout out the area, and check for teams. Another con that Crypto lacks is movement abilities. Unlike movement legends like Octane or Path, he is unable to get out of a fight or avoid being shot safely, so positional awareness and decision making is key so that you're not isolated in a fight. And lastly, if the drone is shot down, it will take 40 seconds to be usable again, and unlike Bloodhound, he cannot provide information or scans between those 40 seconds, so it's up to your game sense and skill to win the fight. Without drone, the enemy team is more likely to push since there is no EMP or scans. So it's your call to delay the push, fall back or fight without hacks or EMP. Now let's get into rank tips. If you consider yourself to have good game sense, then take the role of in-game leader. In majority of my Diamond to Master series, which you can watch on the channel, you can see me communicating and making decisions that suit the team and in turn we win most of our games. As Crypto, the drone provides so much information which further helps in making decisions. Use voice chat and be loud and clear with your calls and even though you want to be an in-game leader, do listen to your teammates and see their point of view and tell them if their decision is bad or not, but also give them a reason why their call may not work. In-game leader is not a hard task, so it could be simply asking for jump master and landing at uncontested POIs, looking to take, avoid or reset from a fight, making calls to move to a certain location, holding down a location or making early or late rotations. As you play Apex more, you'll understand ring zones and you'll be able to somewhat predict where the next ring will be, so you could be making the calls to go early or late into the zone. You also need to know your team composition and understand their abilities, pros and cons. Examples would be Rampart or Watson being able to hold down a building, or having Horizon, Wraith, Bloodhound or Gibraltar, meaning you can take more aggressive fights. Understanding your team comp will allow you to make more decisions and potentially help depending on the situation you're in. Some players not be able to use their abilities effectively, so calling out when to use it could help the team. Always ask for Jumpmaster either through voice or text chat. Some people in the community do not know this, but make sure to select your legend in order to have a better chance of getting Jumpmaster. Jumpmaster is usually given to the player furthest to the right if they have selected their legend. So if you selected your legend but you're first or second on the legend select screen, but your teammates do not select their legend, then you will be given Jumpmaster. Now that you have been given jump master, what do you do? The best way to survive off drop is to land on a POI uncontested. This allows the team and yourself to potentially have good loot and feeling confident in taking a fight. Usually if the drop ship is on one side, most teams tend to not bother diving long, so you may have one side to yourself. But if one or two teams land with or near you, then you may be able to challenge uncontested as there are no teams nearby to third. As you dive down, be aware of your surroundings by using the free look function. 
check how many squads land near you and relay the message to your team as it could be a potential fight. If there's a team coming to the same spot, react to that and attempt to land on a safe POI if you don't want to challenge. Check the kill feed and listen to the guns being shot. It can help you determine whether to loot quickly and attempt to third or take your time since the fight has finished. You can tell if two teams trade or finish a downed from the kill feed so capitalising on that could be easy KP. It's also important to check your surroundings as loot might not be as good so seeing what's taken and what's not will allow your team to get more loot so plan your route for free loot spots. Not every game will have a free POI, therefore it's important to let your team know that you're about to challenge a 50-50 which essentially means that you're gambling off drop since you're dropping with an enemy team. Loot RNG is a factor whether you win a fight or not but if you succeed then you have some early KP and that you can relax. Again, check your surroundings and remember the teams that land nearby because if the fight is taking too long, teams will come to third party. The best way to climb through the ranks is getting early KP and then playing end game but every game is not the same so there will be games where you fight no one and potentially get 1-3 to three KP and win or get early KP and die in 10th resulting in a few RP gained or lost. Any positive RP is good RP. Next part is what guns you should be using. It's personal preference and depending on your playstyle but the general rule is to have guns that offer different types of ranges. Examples would be R99, Volt, Mastiff, Eva 8 or Prowler for close range and for long range either the R301, Hemlock, Spitfire or Flatline. It's important to learn and use a variety of guns since you're not always able to rock the same guns every game and if you're fighting off drop. Using a sniper minus the Kraber or a semi-auto gun can be useful and deal a lot of damage but at the upper stages of ranked it's not often someone will expose themselves to being shot from long ranges. Usually when you're looking for your first KP, make sure to hear out for gunshots. This could be when you're looting off drop or another POI or when you're rotating to the circle zone. This is where your memory kicks in because if you were checking your surroundings before, you would know how many teams that are nearby or near enough to third party. If you land on or near POIs on the edge of the map, then those fights are usually ideal as there are not many teams nearby to third whereas if you've attempted to fight in the middle of the map. But be mindful as there might be other teams thinking the same thing. Once you're near two teams fighting make sure not to initiate the third party too early, let them shoot for a bit and check kill feed and hear for what guns they are using. Guns like R99, Volt or even shotguns means that it's a close range fight and anyone can get downed. If you notice that they're having a mid to long range fight, let them continue to shoot as they could knock an enemy team which would allow you to push from that. Communicate that with your team and let the other team push otherwise by shooting a team when they are crossing or trying to third too early could result in teams focusing on your team or warning current teams that there are third parties and look to run away. So waiting, listening to the guns used and checking kill feeds for knocks is a good way to third party your team. A successful third party will allow you to get easy KP more and better loot and this would allow your team to play for end game rather than worrying about your first KP. The max KP has increased from 5 to 6 starting from season 8 and can be a mixture of 2 kills and 4 assists, 5 kills and 1 assist or 6 assists so you have the potential of getting more points than before. Having 2 to 3 KP is generally good at the start of the game and the next route is playing for end game because if there is a full team as last squad then you are more than likely to have max or close to max KP and a win. Next tip is knowing when to take a fight. It's kind of hard to explain the best ways of taking a fight because there are so many factors which could help your team or enemy team. Things like high ground, zone pushing, whether your team or they are in a building. The legends that you have or the legends that they have can all change the fight. Characters like Revenant and Octane are very popular in ranked this King's Canyon split as it offers an extra life and usually the easiest way to get KP. As Crypto you should be checking the banners for nearby squads in the area. If there is one squad, let your team know and scout around the area. One team in the area means that there are a 200 meter radius of crypto and to give you a better idea of how big that is, the radius is slightly bigger than your minimap. If there are two squads nearby, also let your team know and scout the area. Do not take long in the drone as one team may see you in your drone making you an easy target. Check their positions and lean towards playing safe and letting both teams move because if you plan to fight one team then the other squad in the area will more than likely look to third party. However you can use your drone to distract enemies and by them shooting your drone will attract enemy teams which could lead to your team being able to third. Another reason to take a fight is the type of evo shields they have. If you have better loot such as blue and purple shields and the enemies have white or blue 
then it's a lot easier to take a fight and especially if you have crypto since you have EMP. Fights need to be completed as fast as possible since gunshots attract third parties so if it's taking too long check banners for any changes to the squads in the area. If there are more squads inform your team and look to reset. Resetting means going back to a safe spot and healing till full. This will help your team and yourself figure out the next plan of action. When taking a fight look for isolated legends as this could encourage your team to double or triple up on the solo. This could be if they're away from the rest of the enemy team or looking to catch up so shooting the last legend could result in a knock. Next up is knowing when to not overextend. Overextending is usually when yourself or a teammate is far away from the rest risking not only yourself but the rest of the team. Just like the previous section mentioned teams will be looking to find isolated legends and are more likely to push a solo and force the others to help. Legends like Wraith, Path, Octane, Gibraltar are decent legends to wander off by their own since they have abilities to go back safely. But as Crypto you do not have the abilities to do so other than EMP to slow enemies down but that requires you to be in your drone. If worse comes to worse you're being pushed and you're always solo, hold your tactical button until you're out of your drone and look for a quick EMP. This will slow down enemies and potentially buy you extra time to run to your team. Other factors like nades and abilities like Octane's jump pad should be a reason why not to overextend because if it's too late to run back then you can easily get shot from the back and cost your team. Always check for what legends the enemies are using and think about what they can do with their abilities to force certain situations. Next is what to do when you finish a fight. If your teammate is downed, be sure to prioritise an armor swap from a death box as it's a quick way to replenish your shield and then res your team. If another team comes then it could give you extra time to run away since you have full shield. Use evo swaps and best practice is by playing in pubs. It's the process of going into a death box or swapping into an evo shield on the floor and quickly switching armor so you have those extra few seconds to live or be able to kill the enemy team. It's also worth noting to your team which evo shields has been swapped so if they do plan to swap they know which boxes to prioritize. This reduces the amount of time you have to heal or give you enough time to run away. If you are fast enough and your teammate is being rezzed, drop your evo shield and take one from the death box. That way it gives your teammate a fighting chance as soon as they are rezzed. The ideal situation is to loot as quick as possible and move away from the area. As Crypto, check for banners for squads. If there are no squads, then your team will have all the time in the world to loot. But if there are one or more squads, let your team know, prioritize your loot and move away from the area and play for end zone. Next up is when and how to rotate. Learning how to rotate allows your team to survive as long as possible and being able to have the upper hand against teams. Rotating is sometimes predicting where the teams could be and reacting to that. Legends like Wraith, Horizon, Bloodhound, Octane and Crypto are good legends to use for scouting potential dangers and it's important that if you're playing as any of those characters you should be able to be confident in your calls and hopefully be able to rotate. Although it's very simple, use high advantage and buildings to rotate. There might be teams nearby waiting for knocks or looking to poke so having some form of cover could benefit the team when rotating safely. As Crypto, your drone range is 200 meters so checking in choke points or buildings to help you make a decision to rotate through certain areas. Utilize the range so that if there is a team holding down an area, it will give your team time to think and reduce the chances of being pushed. Predict zones and use the survey beacon to scan upcoming zones. If the end zone leans towards the edge of the map, then it's usually advised to make the early rotate and secure an area so that you'll be able to poke at teams coming from the zone. But if the zone ends around the middle of the map, then it's advised to rotate late with the zone. Next are some general tips when playing ranked. Solo queuing at the start of the split is a lot harder since you'll be coming up against people who want to race to the upper levels of ranked, so the rank experience at the start is usually bad. During the mid to near the end of the split is the best time to solo queue since all the players who grind and are good are no longer in your matchmaking system. Setting goals is important as it gives yourself a reason to grind ranked and also motivates you to try to become better. This could be trying to get diamond this split and masters next split or trying to get from plat 2 to plat 4 in 2 days. The more goals you set and complete shows that you're improving and have something to play for. Next is by watching other people solo queue. Some like to play the game and gain experience from that and some people like to watch others like their favourite YouTubers or streamers to see their thought process and playstyle. This season there has been a spike in challenges to solo queue to masters and I've listed a few streamers in the description such as Shiv FPS, Serial, Eurys, It's Timmy and Kuja the God that have all solo queued to masters to help those that like to watch others play before applying transferable skills into their next game. 
Now onto gameplay based tips. Using text chat on PC, pinging system or voice chat is crucial when climbing up the ranks as you're able to communicate with your team to make decisions or warn for upcoming dangers. Keep them short, precise and make sure that your team can hear your comms. Using the replicator is very useful for crafting batteries, medkits, upgrading armor and crafting specific items depending on the rotations. It's a free way to obtain items and will definitely help you in fights. This usually occurs in endgame but if you see a team in a bad spot, put pressure on them by nading or shooting at them. This could lead them being forced to push the other team and result in being farmed and your team could get easy KP. It's quite useful in endgame as it could be the last two to three squads and force others to fight leads to easy third partying or if there are more teams in a small zone it usually leads to a chain reaction of third parties. So holding down areas and angles and putting pressure on certain times can help your team win the game. And the last of the general tips is if you main one of the popular legends in ranked like Wraith, Bloodhound, Gibraltar, Horizon, Pullstick and with the Season 8 meta, Octane and Revenant always have a backup legend that you can always go to. Best practice is by playing pubs or watching guides so you are familiar with the playstyle and abilities so you are more confident in taking fights. And finally the cons of solo queuing in ranked. Solo queuing can be a long and painful process. You may be the best player in the world but your teammates are often the common cause of negative RP. Some players just don't listen or overextend which results in being a man down or losing the fight. If your teammates don't listen then it's best to stick with the team and try to make decisions off that. It's never a good idea to play by yourself as you're much better at fighting with your team. But as crypto you do not have to go down with your team. You have the ability to pick up banners with your drone within a 200 meter radius and res your teammates instantly so if the fight is not favourable for you, then do not be afraid to make the early call and run. Teammates can be toxic so do not try to fight back and simply mute them. Continuing to argue just results in a lack of concentration and may put you in a bad mood. And lastly, if you are losing, just have a break, whether it be for a few hours or the next day. Take your time and recover from long sessions as solo queuing takes a toll on your mental health. That's all for this solo queue guide. I hope I have helped expand your knowledge and made your solo queue journey bearable. If I've missed something out or you would like to add tips, then be sure to comment, like and subscribe. I appreciate you all watching this guide and hopefully I'll see you guys in Masters or Pred. Peace.